Hi everybody, welcome to my channel and as I promised earlier, I will talk today about some of the Russian principalities in detail. So today I will talk about Novgorod Republic and its semi-democratic political system. Government structure of Novgorod Republic was different from other Russian principalities. It was governed by Vyche or so-called Senate, which was formed by all free men. Novgorod Republic had vast territories. In the east its border was Ural Mountains, in the north it was White Sea, in the south up to Valda, and in the west to Gulf of Finland. It was the biggest Russian principality in the 12th and 30th centuries. After Novgorod's duke was expelled in 1136, Novgorod became a republic. Despite of its vast territories, Novgorod lands were infertile. So the source of wealth were trade, hunting, fishing, and lumber. Therefore, economic factor was capital, but not land, like in other Russian principalities. Governance was conducted by Vyche. Meetings included all free men. However, the biggest power center was formed by boyars or Russian aristocracy at that time. So republic was aristocratic. Vyche's main jurisdiction was inviting and expelling the duke, appointing governors and patriarch, declaring war and signing peace treaty, ratifying and cancelling laws, and determining taxes. The executive power belonged to Posadny. He was elected for one or two years and managed different issues such as shipping, army, foreign policy. Trade and taxes were given to Pisetsky. He was also in charge of the city militia. Duke's throne was not passed from father to son. Duke was an army commander and was in charge of the court. In 13th-14th centuries, Vecha invited dukes from Rurik dynasty from Vladimir Suzel principality. The first reason of republican government structure was the absence of heredity of the duke's position in Novgorod. Other dukes being busy with fighting nomads wanted Novgorod to pay tribute. That's why it was usually ruled by invited duke or elected posadnik. The frequent change of dukes in Novgorod prevented large-scale land ownership because the duke served not enough time to grant land to his loyalists. The second reason was the power of economic elites in Novgorod. Geographically, Novgorod was in a good location for trade. Stocks of furs, honey, wax, stimulated production and barter. This helped to develop a class of owners from small to large. Those owners promoted particular dukes who would support their interests. 30 families concentrated all the political and economic power in the Republic, organizing an oligarchical political regime. Free men also supported this regime as they would work for the aristocracy. Novgorod's geographical location limited agriculture development with its feudal serf type of system, due to relatively small number of peasants and futility of their enslavement. From the other hand, its geographical location increased the importance of crafts and helped to develop infrastructure and craft and trade republic. The main economic factor was capital. Novgorod's system was similar to Venetian and Genoese systems. The development of crafts and trade required a more democratic regime than in other Russian principalities. And the base of this regime was a middle class associated with trade. In the middle of the 15th century, some of Novgorod aristocracy promoted a union with Lithuania, an enemy of many Russian principalities. Moscow Principality's Duke Ivan III urged boyars, local dukes and clergy to punish Novgorod aristocracy for betraying Rus and the Orthodox Church. As a smart and clever politician, he managed to raise against Novgorod aristocracy not only local dukes but also Novgorod citizens. In 1471, Ivan III organized a campaign against Novgorod. Despite of eightfold superiority of troops, Novgorod was defeated. Ivan III repressed all Novgorod people, but already in 1477, Novgorod refused to admit Ivan III as its duke and killed his supporters. Thus, Ivan III organized the second campaign to Novgorod. They blockaded the city and in a month Novgorod capitulated. Ivan III destroyed all republican structures. The Vecha's bell, a symbol of Novgorod Republic, was taken to Moscow. Instead of Posadnik, Novgorod was governed by vassal sent from Moscow. Novgorod aristocracy was destroyed, trade outflow diminished. 
That's how the one and only semi-democratic regime ended in Russia. Novgorod Republic existed 342 years. That's it for today. Thank you for watching me. Please subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.